All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rachel. I'm a registered dietitian here with Life Start. And today we're going to be discussing healthy eating on the go. Uh, I'm very excited to discuss this with you today. I think, you know, some of the hardest parts about eating healthfully is logistically, how is it going to fit into my life, right? And so we're going to talk about some tips today. Also, thank you to Leah Baxter for putting together most of these wonderful slides. And let's jump right in. So some key points we're going to go over today. We've got to start with some healthy dietary guidelines, right? Before we know what we have to do, we want to know what our, what our goal is, what kind of healthful foods we're trying to incorporate into our lives. Um, Common barriers to eating healthfully and some tips for overcoming those. We're gonna talk about that today. And then we've got some easy recipes, some grab and go snacks to give you some ideas to see if any of that is going to work for you. And then some tips for eating out and takeout as well. So this is for anyone with that busy lifestyle or with travel plans coming back up. Hopefully, you know, if you haven't opened up already, Maybe we can start opening up soon, getting back to some normalcy. So thinking about, you know, when we do start going out to restaurants, um, how, to, how to eat healthfully and, and pick, make good choices when we're traveling as well. Nutrition overview, right? Uh, having a healthy, balanced diet, we know this reduces our risk for several different chronic diseases, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. It also promotes our overall health and vitality, having energy to do the things we want to do, being focused, being alert. Uh, mental health is a big one. And so, you know, regardless of what your goals are, that's, that's the, the most helpful thing, right? Is just living that healthy and energetic lifestyle. So let's talk about some of the nutrition first before we get into our tips today for our grains, we wanna make as many grains, whole grains as possible, right? Because this is gonna include fiber, it's gonna have more vitamins and minerals than our you know, bleached, enriched breads, white rice, um, those kinds of things are gonna be a little less helpful for us than the whole grain versions. So picking whole grains wherever you can. Fruits and vegetables, especially for Americans, we tend not to get enough fruits and vegetables in our day. Uh, for reference, a good goal to shoot for is typically two to two and a half cups every day for, for your fruits and vegetables uh, combined. Healthy fats are nuts, avocados, fatty fish such, such as salmon, different uh, seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, all of these have really healthy fats for us a little bit healthier than uh, typically our animal product fats, right? So uh, butter, cheese, red meats tend to have a little bit less healthy fat for us. Which also brings us to our next one, lean proteins. When we're talking about meat, we're referring to chicken and fish tend to be a little bit leaner than our red meats. Um, this also includes lentils and beans fall into that protein and carb combination spectrum, right? Legumes, nuts, some healthy protein options there. Sodium is a big one. Whenever we're looking at like easy, quick snacks and meals, they tend to be a little bit higher in salt, right? Because salt and sodium, that's what makes it shelf stable. And so we'll talk about label reading in this presentation as well today to when you are grabbing those quick grab and go things, making it the healthiest choice that you can. All right. so. Um, we talked about whole grains, getting those lean proteins, fruits and vegetables. This is a great visual of that. I kind of look at this plate and think volume wise, this is the, the food groups I wanna get in my day, right? So half my day, uh, I want fruits and vegetables and healthy fats, starches, and then proteins kind of on the other half. So just gives you a visual guide, not necessarily having to include all of these food groups in every meal, right? That sounds like a lot of prep, a lot of work, <laughs> the opposite of what we're talking about today, right? Um, but thinking about these kind of things and incorporating all of these in my day as a whole. So barriers, barriers to eating healthfully. Time is always the biggest challenge, right? Juggling a million different things, whether it's work or family, other obligations. And so with this slide, 
I think the first step whenever you're uh, trying to eat healthfully is deciding, okay, what is my biggest barrier to this? What challenges am I facing? Because before we determine that, we can't make any meaningful change, right? So we'll talk about just some common barriers today. Um, being bored with the choices available to you. It's hard to eat healthy if you're not enjoying what you're eating, right? So finding recipes you actually enjoy, you know, it doesn't have to be plain carrot sticks. You know, we can, we can make that delicious. Um, not having enough time to pack lunch at home or to pack, prep, cook in general is definitely the biggest one. Vending machines or not having quick options or healthy choices close to you. Uh, not having a cafeteria or restaurant close to work. Limited space at work to store a lunch. Um, and then feeding multiple household members. If you've got picky eaters, people with multiple diets can definitely be a challenge as well. So identifying what barrier resonates with you, right, before we're going to be able to overcome that. And hopefully we've got some tips for you today um, to help with that. All right, and just kind of for reference here, in 1960, 26% of our food expenditures were away from the home. Uh, today, and this is talking about, you know, particularly Americans, uh, close to 50% of our um, food expenditures are away from the home. So we're spending more money, we are eating out more. And the average restaurant meal has over a thousand calories and more than 3000 milligrams of sodium. And for reference, and that certainly varies depending on who you are, your activity level, but a typical meal is somewhere between 400 and 700 calories, right? And then 2,400 milligrams of sodium is an average goal for our, our total day, right? So 3,000 is definitely a little bit over. And uh, we'll definitely talk about label reading today. So you can get a little bit better idea, at least for the products you're purchasing with a label, um, what to look for on there. All right, now into the fun things. Now that you've gotten my nutrition lecture, uh, let's talk about healthy snacking. So these are our three components we wanna find in our healthy snacks, right? Um, these three components, protein, fiber, and fat are gonna help slow our digestion down, help keep our energy more stable throughout the day. Um, fiber is a huge one for our gut health, that buzzword gut health, right? Feeding our healthy gut bacteria. Fiber is what does that, right? To help support our immune system and just keep us functioning and energized. Protein helps slow our digestion down. It can help keep you fuller longer. It definitely has an effect on our satiety. And so these are gonna include meat, poultry, fish. Those are our lean proteins, right? Legumes and tofu, tofu are excellent as well. Eggs and dairy can be good sources. Uh, garbanzo beans, nuts, and some grains have a decent amount of protein in them as well. Fiber is gonna be our fruits, our vegetables, our whole grains, nuts, beans, legumes. And then our healthy fats, essential for you know, brain function and development, cell membranes. It's also uh, a very satiating nutrient as well, right? It digests really slowly. So we tend to stay full, full longer and it can help keep our energy more stable. Nuts, seeds, non-tropical oils, fatty fish and avocado, these are all great fat sources. And we'll talk more about some snacks next here. Uh, so Greek yogurt is, is one of my favorites and it can be a dairy-based Greek yogurt or if you prefer, you know, almond or cashew yogurts are out there as well. Um, we can use this as a replacement. So maybe sour cream, adding some spices to it, some cumin, cayenne pepper to give it a little flavor. It can make a great dip. Um, adding some spices, cucumber dill in particular is a good one, some frozen spinach, and using that as a dip for our veggies. A little bit of salt and pepper in there as well, highly recommend. Uh, we can freeze Greek yogurt as kind of a uh, little healthier ice cream alternative. Um, maybe getting a plain Greek yogurt and adding some mint or some honey, or maybe some fresh berries or fruits before freezing. So that is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Banana makes a great snack. Uh, bananas are really inexpensive, fantastic source of fiber. Uh, we get some good vitamins and minerals there as well. Add it to a peanut butter sandwich, a little bit of cinnamon, 
You can even grill that. It adds a really nice flavor. Grilled peanut butter uh, banana sandwich. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's not bad. Uh, blending bananas or frozen bananas into smoothies, milk or milk alternative, a little bit of yogurt, ice, banana, and honey um, makes a delicious, super creamy smoothie. Bake it into banana bread. And kind of this one definitely goes back to having a balanced snack, right? We want to have some protein, some fiber or fat in there. So adding walnuts for a little bit of snacking balance uh, to your banana bread is a great option. Canned tuna, uh, another really inexpensive snacking option. You can grab it at the store, opens up, uh, mixes really easily with things. We can use Greek yogurt or mayo, a little bit of red onion, celery or relish. And we can use that on kind of a lettuce leaf like I have pictured here. Mix it into your pasta salad to get add a little bit of protein to that dish. And then uh, there's kind of a fun patty recipe here too. We can use the canned tuna with egg, breadcrumbs, parsley, and some green onions. All kinds of different things we can do with that. If nothing else from the presentation, finding ways to get veggies in your life is so, so important, right? Slicing up carrots, cucumbers, peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, really any veggie you want. Um, finding a dip for that, hummus, your favorite dressing, pesto. Even if you, you, know, you find it's a little bit saltier dip, I mean, kind of pros and cons, right? Getting veggies into your diet, if having a dip makes it delicious um, and that gets you to eat veggies, then do it, right? Order a side salad when you eat out. Bringing leftovers to include in your stir fries, your soups, your casseroles. And then my personal favorite is just sneaking vegetables into your favorite dishes. Um, lasagna is a good one. You can sneak onions, mushrooms, uh, lots of different things that can make that dish more flavorful. Leafy greens on your sandwich, adding some lettuce or some spinach um, in our like scrambled eggs or stir fries. Whenever you're looking at a recipe, I always add more vegetables. It almost never, you know, messes up the recipe and it adds more flavor and more nutrition to it. So getting all those greens, getting all those veggies in there when you're doing any kind of stir fries. All right, uh, so when we're label reading, this is a really great quick tip guide. So at the top, you're gonna see uh, your serving sizes. So look at the caloric content. If you're someone who's watching your calories, this is a great place to start, right? How many servings am I actually consuming? And then multiplying these numbers accordingly. Our fat, our cholesterol, and sodium are typically the nutrients that we want to limit, right? Uh, sodium tends to be really high in prepackaged products. And then a good general rule of thumb for those nutrients, 20% uh, or more tends to be high. And so looking for uh, less than 20%, depending on what it is, you can get away with 20% for, um, for the serving that you're consuming for our sodium and our fat in particular. Dietary fiber, looking for things with at least a few grams of fiber on here. I would say three or more grams of fiber is a, is a solid source. And then um, having some protein and some healthy fats in, in our products as well, right? So if we look back at this fat label and we see that most of this fat's coming from saturated fat, it's probably a less health, healthful option, right? If you see 20% or more on your daily value, for saturated fat versus for this one, it looks like a lot of our fat's coming from other sources. Um, I do see trans fat on here, which is a whole, whole nother topic itself, but the mono and the poly unsaturated fats, those are gonna be our more healthful fats in general, right? So if you see a lot of it coming from these two, it's probably a less healthy option. And you can determine that pretty easily by looking at the daily value, right? 20% or more is gonna be a high source of that nutrient. restaurant substitutions. So on days you're eating out, there's lots of different options for making it a little healthier, right? If you're someone who loves dessert, maybe thinking about boxing up part of your meal ahead of time or even asking the waiter to box it up. So 
but you can save room for dessert. Um, if you're not a big sugar person, passing on dessert kind of goes back to what are your barriers? What's gonna work best for you, right? As far as striking that balance. Choosing water or sparkling, uh, sparkling water instead of alcoholic drinks. Um, you can add a splash of citrus or a splash of, splash of juice. Um, so you kind of are still getting that um, kind of that drink buzz, right? Kombucha is a great option. Lots of different restaurants are serving kombucha now. Getting vegetables wherever you can. So when we're looking at eating out, if you're someone who's traveling a lot in particular, it's a little bit harder to get vegetables into your day. So ordering side salads, the roasted, the grilled veggies on the side, um, or choosing more vegetable heavy dishes such as stir fries. Choosing non-fried foods um, over fried food options. So baked or grilled, those are great words to look for. Um, because when we're frying the food, we're gonna have a lot more trans fats. Uh, it's gonna add a breading to the food. You're gonna get a little bit less of, of the healthful nutrients too. So when you get the baked or the grilled option, you tend to get a little bit more of, of the protein or what you're actually looking for anyway. Going without butter, margarine, mayonnaise, gravy, cheese, or asking for these things on the side so that you can adjust the portions yourself. They tend to be a little bit heavier on the restaurant side, right? Because they're trying to make it as tasty as possible. Um, but we can get all of that flavor with a little bit less. Grab and go tip. So here's a few more of just my favorite snacking options just to give you ideas, right? Uh, so yogurt, low fat cheeses, hard boiled eggs, uh, applesauce and nuts. It's a great example of getting our kind of fiber and our protein, our fat balance there. Hummus singles with cut veggies, guacamole. We can do homemade guac or even the single servings. Apples and peanut butter. Uh, chia seed pudding is a great one. And I do have a site with recipes I will send you to for that. Overnight oats. Um, those are great ones because you just mix it up the night before, you stick it in the fridge and it's ready in the morning, right? Tuna with whole grain crackers. When we're looking at protein bars, granola bars, yogurt, these are things that you want to check the label, right? Particularly for the added sugar, saturated fat, and sodium, and choosing options under 20% of the daily value for those nutrients. Because we tend to get plenty of sugar, saturated fat, sodium, and those tend to be a little bit higher in those, those prepackaged products, right? So paying attention to that. Packing lunch and snacks at night before. Uh, mornings tend to be a little more rushed, right? Take some time the night before, decide what you're gonna have for lunch, snacks, or maybe even picking the restaurant, checking the menu the night before, so that you're ready and you're prepared for your day and, and making healthy choices. Packing leftovers in single serving containers makes it easy. You can grab your leftovers and go instead of having to, um, to reportion things out. Just some easy grab and go tips for you there. Setting smart goals. Whenever we're trying to, you know, make a nutritional change, this is a great place to start. The more specific, measurable, achievable, realistic your goal, the more likely, the more likely we are to do it, right? So specific goal, what it, what do you want to achieve? Um, making sure it's measurable. Uh, you know, is it realistic? You know, I'm. Am I trying to lose 10 pounds in a week? Maybe that's not the best idea. Cut it back a little bit, right? And then time bound, deciding when you're gonna do that activity. So if it's, you know, I need to do more shopping if I'm gonna do any kind of meal prep in my week. So I need to decide when I'm gonna go to the store or when I'm going to make my shopping list, right? Put a time on it in your week and we're much more likely to do it that way. So set your SMART goals, that is, going to set you up for success, for sure. Uh, some pre-prepped options on here. Cooking is not always feasible, right? Um, so looking at your local grocery store, often there are pre-cut veggies and salads that you can just buy so that it's already ready to grab and go. Sometimes they have full meals too. Um, but pretty much any grocery store, I know Whole Foods, Trader Joe's has these. Green Chef 
HelloFresh and Freshly are also meal delivery options. And these are pretty helpful options. They do tend to be a little bit lower on the fruits and vegetables side. So you might even, you know, have some of those to supplement with those meals. But it, if cooking is really not for you, these can be a great option. So Green Chef, they give you portioned ingredients that you cook yourself. HelloFresh is very similar. And then Freshly, you just reheat the chef cooked meals. Um, so that's probably the easiest one. And they can be a little bit more on the spendier side, but if prep is your biggest barrier, these can be great options. And with that, I'll go ahead and stop my share here and see if anyone has any questions. All right. Is higher than 20% in nutrients too high if you use a multivitamin? Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, that's a really good question. Multivitamin, multivitamins can be a great supplement to our diet for vitamins and minerals. Um, it's very hard to overconsume nutrients from food, just the way our digestion kind of selectively pulls things out that it needs as far as vitamins and minerals. And when it's attached to fiber and fat, it's very hard to overconsume those. So no, if you're taking a multivitamin and you're consuming something that's over 20%, it's usually not a problem. With any kind of supplementation, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor or your dietitian about it, um, just to check the label and make sure what you're consuming is, is going to be beneficial for you. But as far as food consumption, it's very unlikely that you would go over in those nutrients. Great. Are there any packaged foods I would recommend for snacks? Yeah, kind of like um, like protein bars and, and those kind of prepackaged things. Is that your question? Yes, um, there are. I uh, definitely depends on the person and what else you're doing in your day, right? If you're someone who who grabs a lot of prepackaged things, be sure you're checking the label and looking for those lower lower sodium, lower sugar options, right? Um, but I think Kind bars are pretty good. Um, Cliff bars can be a good like breakfast replacement option. They actually have a decent amount of fiber and protein in them. They do have caffeine, so I wouldn't do that one later in the day. Oh, what else have I tried lately? Uh, Luna bars, ABC bars. Um, I'm not against the prepackaged snacks, especially if you're someone who's doing cooking in other parts of your day. Uh, it can be a great, great supplement that you don't have to prep. Is it possible to consume too much of a fruit or veggie as a snack? Very unlikely. You're gonna be full and sick of that fruit or vegetable long before you can overconsume it. Um, for fruits, it's maybe a little bit easier just because they are higher in sugar. As far as vitamins and minerals, you will not, you will not overconsume it. Um, but sometimes like mangoes and some of those tropical fruits are a little higher in sugar. So combine those with something with some fat and protein. Um, have it with a side of nuts to kind of give you that little bit slower digestion. Um, just so you don't get that sugar rush and crash. Not for a, a general healthy adult. For someone with, you know, kidney problems or, you know, particular medical issues, it is possible. But for, for that person, you should already be working with a dietitian uh, or your physician. Ooh, is there a protein powder that I recommend? And then a question about uh, bone, bone broth protein. Um, yeah, for protein powders, I don't have any particular brand I recommend. I just suggest it's third party tested because supplements, at least in the United States, are not regulated by the FDA. So having that sticker on the label that says a third party company went in and tested it um, tells you that what's in the product is actually in it. You know, it's not just filled with starch or some other ingredient. Uh, it's in the quantity that it says, and there's no banned substances, um, which has occurred occasionally with you know, sports supplements in particular, protein powders, pre-workouts, that kind of thing. Occasionally they have been found to have like doping substances in them. So having that third party testing sticker is a good idea. NSF is a good one. USP, if you see those little stickers on your label, then you know it's been third party tested. Edwards at lifestart.net is my email. If you would like to reach out to me, feel free to do so book a dietitian appointment, whatever you'd like to do. And thanks so much for joining everyone. I'll see you next time.